For about half a century, our world was divided between two blocs, one led by the United States, the other led by the Soviet Union. But then the Soviet Union collapsed and the world entered a unipolar world order dominated by a single superpower. This period, beginning in the 1990s, had many across the world cheered first and there was reason to. Nuclear Armageddon had been avoided and oppressive communist regimes across the world began to crumble. But even after the collapse of the Soviet Union, plenty of states remained, which were and still are pretty unhappy with a world dominated by the United States. However, most of these countries are too small to challenge the military and economic might of the United States. Except for maybe two. China and Russia. We are often presented with pictures like this. China Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin holding hands were strengthening the friendship between the countries. News article after news article after news article is telling us. These two nations are building an alliance to challenge the United States together and bring an end to that era of American dominance. But are things really that simple? What problems does this new alliance face and can it actually last? Despite having lived in the same state once during the Mongol Empire, Chinese and Russians had little to no contact with each other until the early 1600s. And when they met, the Chinese saw the Russians as just another group of barbarians seeking to pay tribute to the emperor to be allowed to trade which the Russians didn't like one bit. Things only got worse by the start of the 1800s, a time the Chinese know as the beginning of the century of humiliation. China's isolationism and its refusal to adapt to a changing world made it a target for the colonial powers of the time. And as one of these colonial powers, Russia wanted a piece of the cake as well. By 1860, Russia had taken these lands known as Outer Manchuria from China and Russia would have taken more if they didn't lose a war against Japan later on, who wanted that land for themselves. But things changed drastically in the 20th century. In Russia, the hardships of World War I led to the dissolution of the Russian Empire, first into the short-lived Republic of Russia and finally into the Communist Soviet Union. In China, a similar transformation occurred from the Qing Dynasty to the Chinese Republic, which after being torn apart by a civil war and the simultaneous war against Japan would become the also communist People's Republic of China. This was the first turning point in the two countries' relation, as it made an alliance based on the joint communist ideology possible, which was made official in 1950, but only lasted until Stalin's death. Disagreements on the future of communism led to the so-called Sino-Soviet split, the alliance broke and China and the Soviet Union basically became rivals. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, a second turning point in their relationship began. Suddenly, the rivalry between China and the Soviet Union's successor state, Russia, was gone and the two nations began to rebuild the relationship. This new relationship was first rebuilt with trade. In the 1990s, trade between China and Russia was valued between 5 and 8 billion dollars a year. In 2018, this value exceeded 100 billion for the first time in history, and by 2024, both nations expect to get over a value of 200 billion. Additionally, the creation of projects like the Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to increase economic integration along the historic Silk Road, and organizations like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization have brought these countries closer together when it comes to planning the future of Asian trade. And soon, this increasing cooperation was also noticeable outside of economics. In 2008, Russia and China resolved a small territorial dispute over a few islands along the Amur River, which existed since 1931. It was a symbolic move for the building of a new Chinese and Russian friendship. A friendship which should be demonstrated here. This is the United Nations Security Council arguably the most important body of the entire organization, in fact, the only body which has the power to make legally binding resolutions. China and Russia both have one of the only five permanent seats here, which come with the important ability to veto resolutions, and they have entered a close partnership to take advantage of that. The United States proposes a resolution condemning the situation in Venezuela. No worries, China and Russia will not let that happen. And although one veto would surely be enough, two vetoes will increase the legitimacy of both vetoes. 
Still, there is no official military alliance between China and Russia. Nonetheless, both nations have cooperated in this regard. China, for instance, participated in Russia's giant Vostok 2018 military drill with over 100,000 soldiers. And when one looks at all these different areas of cooperation, it is easy to come to the conclusion that China and Russia are creating a strong alliance. But when taking a closer look, you will discover that this friendship is not without its problems. Economic cooperation between countries is usually a good thing, but sometimes a trade relationship is characterized by extreme asymmetry. Chinese exports to Russia dwarf what Russia is exporting to China, creating a large trade imbalance. Even worse, China mostly exports cheaply manufactured goods into Russia, while Russia exports mostly valuable and often finite raw materials such as oil, gas and timber. And that makes Russia not happy. Western economic sanctions have only worsened this problem for Russia, making it even more reliant on China as an importer of its oil and gas. Of course, China is aware of this Russian dilemma and has taken advantage by demanding gas and oil for lower prices, making the Russian government even unhappier. Here is a different question. What makes good neighbors? How about respecting each other's boundaries? You don't want your neighbor meddling in your garden. And when it comes to Russia, Central Asia is its garden. Since the 1800s, Central Asia was part of the Russian sphere of influence. Even after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia was able to maintain a strong presence in the region, but not without some new competitors, among which is China. Today, China is the most important trading power in Central Asia alongside Russia, but is expected to surpass Russia in the near future. And with large economic influence also comes influence in other areas. Therefore, Russia's role in Central Asia could be greatly diminished by China's presence. These are all things which annoy Russia about China. But what about the other way around? Let's talk about strategy. When engaging in geopolitics, nations have two options to exert influence over others. The first is hard power. Intimidating a country with your military or threatening economic sanction? This is hard power and what most people think of when they hear geopolitics. But there is a second option, soft power. Why threaten sanctions or military intervention when you can simply buy vital industries of another country to make it dependent on you? Over the years, China has become a master of soft power, using its enormous wealth, lucrative markets and influential diaspora to guide many nations into a Beijing-improved direction. While Russia is surely no stranger to the concept of soft power, its policy approach relies more on hard power especially when it comes to dealing with the Western world. Events like the 2014 Russian annexation of Crimea and the Russian-Georgian war in 2008 have not only damaged Russia's reputation, but also indirectly China's reputation too. If Russia does things like that, and China is Russia's friend, nations begin to worry about both. And this makes it harder for China to continue using soft power. Another area where China and Russia come into conflict with one another are their policies towards national borders. China loves borders and is strongly against any attempts to change any borders in the world. Catalonia, Kosovo, Transnistria don't count on China as an ally. That's not surprising since China has multiple conflicts which threaten its territorial integrity. And that puts China in a very awkward situation when it comes to Russia. Because for Russia, borders are a bit like chocolate. First, you promise to forgo the temptation, then you nibble at just a small piece and before you know it, you've eaten the entire chocolate box while everybody around you gives you disapproving looks. Russia's support for separatist movements in Georgia and Ukraine, as well as its annexation of Crimea puts China into a dilemma. Either China approves of Russia's action, at the cost of undermining their own stance on borders and territorial integrity, or they disapprove of Russia, boosting their credibility but also hurting their relationship with Russia. Besides these issues, there are plenty of more problem areas between China and Russia. Accusations of espionage and technology theft, fears of renewed territorial disputes and mass Chinese migration into Russia's Far East, just to name a few. So what is it then? Are China and Russia allies or not? In short, they are, somewhat. As long as their interests align, China and Russia will be sure to cooperate to increase their chances of success. Nonetheless, 
there are still many problems within this relationship, which, if left unresolved, could lead to an end to this new Chinese-Russian friendship. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, consider subscribing to help this channel grow. See you in the next one.